Welcome to New Life Live with host and founder of New Life Ministries, Stephen Arterburn. New Life Live is dedicated to transforming lives one at a time, thanks to the giving hearts of you, our listeners. Our goal is to provide you with wisdom from God's Word to give you hope and help in life's hardest places. If you have a question you'd like to ask today, our phone lines are open. Call 1-800-229-3000. That number again is 1-800-229-3000. Now here's Steve. Hi, everybody. Welcome to New Life Live. Today on the program, Dr. Jill Hubbard and Dr. Alice Benton, two mothers who just celebrated Mother's Day. How did it go, guys? Mm -hmm. Well, my five-year-old cleaned the bathroom for me, and she decided that the petroleum jelly, the Vaseline jar, that it smelled really good, so yeah. <laughs> she spread it all around the bathroom. I didn't realize she put it on the toilet seat, too, oh, no! until I realized. <laughs> so we are... Uh, that's... Yeah, well, that's, that's great. Very, we got a clean bathroom. Very nice you to share that. With us. Appreciate that. But you know what? Appreciate her, her, her zeal, right? Oh, and yeah. jumping in and taking initiative. Who does mm. that remind you of, Alice? Mm. There you go. That's awesome. And Jill, you had a, you yeah. had a. Oh a, yeah, I had. It was a good. It was a good Mother's Day. My daughter was one of the last people to make it to the flower place, so she came back and she goes, "Mom, this is a. <laughs> this is what you call a modern bouquet." <laughs> I'm thinking it was like a head of lettuce with a lot of the leaves missing. <laughs> so, yeah. so I have a modern bouquet. <laughs> well, I, I tell you, I, I, I'm acknowledged a couple of people that I think um, have made a lot of mothers, and that you know that is uh, one is Lila Rose, who's uh, head of live action because of her. So many women spent yesterday in the joy of motherhood versus regret over an abortion or something she's just a force in the pro-life community and then um i also well i sent a couple other people some emails like that but i know it's not easy for everybody on mother's day we went through seven years of infertility yeah. not always uh, a great day but i just want you to know that wherever you were god was with you uh, and God was loving you. We had a wonderful time. Misty's a great mom. Mm -hmm. She has put so much into these kids, and they love her. And we did uh, the uh, Sound of Music. We watched that. Love doing that on Mother's <laughs> Day. And it's just so much to that, mm -hmm. that amazing movie. Now, um, I want to introduce a couple of people to you here, Sam and Ron. Sam is, Sam's one of our counselors. And Ron, of course, uh, is one of the people that attended Every Man's Battle this past weekend. And um, Ron, let's start with you. We did this online. How did that feel for you? How did it go for you? It's, uh, you know, it was a, it was an emotional roller coaster, really. You know that that really kind of started out with a lot of apprehension, as you can imagine. I I certainly didn't want to go. You know, it, yeah. it wasn't where I would have chose to be in life. I'm 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 sixty, and been dealing with this issue for a long time, you know, as, as, as well as a lot of people, I guess. And yeah, I was just happy to, uh, I, I was, I guess I, 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 being there, all the apprehension and then it starting was just such a, a welcome relief and uh, to know I was, you know, I had turned a corner, you know, you made it. Well, you know, yes, Ron, exactly. uh, you, you start with maybe one of the most important things ever. We hear this all the time. People will say, well, unless they want to be there, it's not going to do any good. And we say, no, that's not true. People come for all sorts of different reasons. And we know that the goal is just get them there or for you as a man, just come hating it all the way. And you're going to find out that it's it's not a horrible thing. And and I love hearing you say I didn't want to be there. Uh, but it changed my life. When we come back from the break, I want to hear just a little bit more. And we've got uh, your counselor on, Sam, who's just done a thousand of these Every Man's Battle weekends. We have another one in May, so we'd love for you to come. If at all possible, you call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We'll tell you all about it. It's May the 30th, and you can still get in that one. But really, really thrilled uh, to, to get to help you today at this number, 1-800-229-3000. 
I was skeptical going into it. Temptation is up, isolation is up. It's the very things that feed addiction. Every day, thousands of women discover their husband is struggling with sexual integrity. And since shelter in place orders have gone into effect, traffic to porn sites has skyrocketed. New Life's Every Man's Battle Workshop can help. As they advertise, it really mm -hmm. was a no shame zone. I've now yeah. got a, a herd of men in my corner. That support system is, is huge. During this time of social distancing, the Every Man's Battle Workshop will be held online Saturday, May 30th. Find sexual integrity, accountability, and connection. Register now to reserve a place at the Every Man's Battle Online Workshop. She saw the immediate change by the end of the day yesterday. Her and I had conversations, calm, respectful conversations. We've never mm -hmm. been there. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back, Steve Arderman here, and uh, we're going to get to your calls here, 1-800-229-3000. But if you were in church, of course, most people weren't because we're looking at it online. Uh, but if you were in church on a given any given Sunday, about 25% of the men that are sitting in church will have opened their Bible that week and read the Bible on a regular basis. About half will have opened up some kind of pornography and looked at it. It's pretty sad. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we're so excited about every man's battle and the change that happens. And Ron, um, final comment from you. What was it that made this, that made the difference? How did you go from, I don't want to be here to, I want to change my life? How'd that happen? What happened? Well, first off, I'd like to say that this is so put together so well, the, the, the pieces of each hour mm. to draw me in. And then, and then I get there and start turning away at, um, yes, that matters to me. Yes. To, you know, that mm. relates to me. These guys are right. just like me. And then mm. to get towards the end and, and they just turned the, the volume up and said, you know, there's a wife here. And, and, you know, it's, it just went from me to, to just bringing back, you know, it, it's such a, a horrible place, those years of participating in all that, to, to just have somebody just come, you know, after you've been me, me, me all day and just, mm -hmm. you know, bring that wife in and, and that life, that precious life, you know, the, the yeah. way he did it, it was just, uh, it was incredible. It was incredible. And it just, just push I think, me all the way through, you know? Hmm. I think what you're talking about is him showing a picture of his wife as a little girl uh, with a little bunny. Is that and, and then he talks about that's who you're married to. You're married to someone who went through a childhood and maybe things weren't so great there. Sam, uh, your thoughts on this? You've done so many of these, and I'm so grateful for you and all the help you've been to so many people. Any thoughts here? Yeah, thank you for the invite. Um, yeah, I thought, uh, you know, Jason, when he does, he talks about his wife and how, how he's hurt her. And uh, it's just very touching for every man's heart when we have the session after Jason's testimony about that and his remorse and his godly sorrow. It's it, it not a man that isn't touched in a very deep way. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I thank you uh, both for sharing with us. And uh, Sam, any uh, encouragement to anyone who's thinking about needing this or not needing this yeah i, I sort, of, sort of like what ron said it's, it's the, the place you need to go and the group you need to be in and the, the setting you have to go to and nobody wants to do it but everybody after they've been to it they see it and they said best thing i ever did hmm. Bar well, none. thank thank you guys for giving others some encouragement uh and i really appreciate it and ron i know you're going to be involved in sustained victory and things are going to just get better not instantly but they're going to get better and uh, so grateful for you guys anybody interested in that 1-800 new life it's online you don't have to travel uh, but you're in groups and it's secure uh, larry sonnenberg's in the studio larry this is the second one you've been a part of what were your thoughts about it uh, well i didn't i didn't really understand how it could the second one could be better than the first and it was you know, there were just some tweaks that we made uh, that Jason suggested, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, it was powerful. More men um, emotional, emotionally affected. Mm-hmm. You could see on screen guys with a lot of tears and wiping mm-hmm. you know, those tears at different points. Men expressing gratitude when it was over. It was just a powerful thing. And the counselors do such a good work. And they're as surprised as anybody, I think, first time they do it, that the kind of connection can be made online as can mm-hmm. be made in person. Yeah. And so. Well, I think um, if, if you could just imagine your person saddled in shame and disconnection, you feel like a fake, uh, you're a pretty good guy otherwise, but you've got this private area of your life. Your wife doesn't know about it or she does a little bit and you live like that and you feel second class and cut off you spend this day with us with every man's battle and everything changes you have integrity you're proud of yourself you know god loves you you feel it call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE and if you know somebody that needs this please you call for them and um, and let us you know just get the information and we'll tell you about it and then you can pass that on and then they can call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Let's go to the phones and let's talk with uh, right off the bat here 1-800-229-3000. Let's talk to Kathy from Sacramento, California. Hi Kathy, you're on. Hi. Welcome. How you doing? Uh doing doing pretty good. Well, great. Tell us what's going on and how we could help. Okay. Well, my my question that I called in with, um, with was about um, s- surviving family members of people who um, die from the COVID virus that's going mm. through mm. right now. Um, yeah. And I've been thinking about that as I've been watching the news. Um, you know, a, a few years ago, I had a, um, a major grief experience. And looking back on it now, I recognize how really um, comforting and a growth experience it was um, to, to, you know, to be part of a grief class, um, the, just the traditions that you go through. And a lot, for a lot of those families now, that's been, they've been shortchanged in that area because the host, a lot of the hospitals have been so full. Um, you know, people in um, yeah. the mortuary business can't spend the time with the families now <clears throat> that they usually right. can. So I now did you have did you have you know, a question? For, did did you have a question for us or? Well, my question was what what can we do us us you know who are not professional counselors? What can we do to help um, people that we come across in that situation where they've had mm-hmm. grief kind of limited, you know, for them, um, the, the grief experience yeah. limited for them? Yeah. Right. Okay. So there are a couple of things. One, and I'm not aware of how they're doing it, but there is um, grief share and they meet face-to-face, and I would imagine that they're doing that online. That's one thing you can do. The other thing, uh, you can always say, you know, if you're really struggling with some ungrieved losses or kind of incomplete grief, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Let them give you some help. Mm -hmm. Now, what I've been doing every day, almost every day, uh, we've skipped a couple of days because we've had some interviews with people like Ann Graham Lotz, and by the way, when she was on, she was just absolutely incredible last week and uh, you sh- could should go back and uh, watch that show or hear it but um, mm-hmm. I'm going through the grief workbook it's the life recovery grief workbook and you go through the 12 steps of grief and and today we're talking about the ninth step of making amends and there you say well why would you need to make amends somebody dies and what do you need to do to make amends well think about this um, there's a thing called a living amends where you can't really make amends to the person because it might hurt them or they're dead and they're not available or they're too far away. So just like Zacchaeus, he, he gave away half his money because he couldn't track down everybody that he had stolen from. So he made a living amends. Well, if the person who died, maybe some of the incomplete grief is that you never get over the regret 
of some kind of unfinished business. So we're taking care of that. The other thing is when you start grieving, it strips away so much of everything that's fake about you. You have a chance to look at yourself at a deeper level. So that's another thing. All of those are step one starts and it's all on YouTube or you could look at it at newlife.com. But here's the other thing is you say to that person, and I'll ask uh, Alice and Jill their thoughts, but you say to that person, look, I see, I feel how hard this is. Um, anytime you want to talk to me, please call me. And when somebody calls you like that, you don't need to have answers. You don't need to have things to say. You just need to have a big ear to listen. Jill, uh, Alice, any thoughts here? Um, from well, you guys? Steve, that last point is what I was thinking of, of how important it is that we have people to share our grief with. Yeah. And so right. if God has put people in your life, you know, in your path that are suffering like this, you know, ask him if you are called to help right and and you help by just being there and listening mm -hmm. and trying yeah. to not move the person farther along than they are you know there's this tendency that we all have when someone's suffering we can't tolerate it and we just want them to hurry up and get to the other side where it's happy again and that does them a disservice they need a That's time right. of being able to voice how horrible it is how much it hurts or how upset they are about the circumstances or how much they wish they could have changed something you know all of their bargaining that they go through yeah. they need to be able to say those things out loud because that's what then moves them along emotionally moves their brain along helps them to get to a point where then they can come to acceptance so don't think you're doing nothing if someone is just venting to you or complaining or crying just being there helps to contain that and because people in their grief often don't know what they need or mm -hmm, want true. offering them these suggestions and, and you can add a couple more when do you want me to call you next and check in with you next i find that offer to be very appreciated or can i make you a meal uh, and can i pray for you but give them options to choose from and because of the complex nature of what's going on in our world right now, I think giving people permission, talk about your anger, talk about the mm -hmm. political side of what's going on and talk about how the restrictions have affected you in your grief. Mm -hmm. You can talk with me about all that and I'll be a listener to you. Yeah, and yeah. and Alice, what you said about you know offering something, a lot of times people will say, well, tell me if you need anything. And you're right, they don't know what they mm -hmm. need. So sometimes actually just showing up, just calling, and asking those questions, I think, is really yeah. helpful. All right. Well, I'm glad that you uh, asked that. A lot of people uh, want to know, how do I, how can I help? And, and uh, you've given us an opportunity to tell folks. But, you know, we have people on the phones ready to talk to folks. They want to help. We have a lot of different resources. And, you know, one of the uh, resources is, like I said, the Life Recovery Workbook for Grief. And it just takes you right through it. And if you do that with a friend or you can even say to your therapist, you know, um, I want to go through this and get some help. What you're doing is letting go. Grieving is a gift from God to let go of something. And, and with it, the pain is no longer as intense. It's so sad to meet somebody that maybe three years ago, someone died or left them or whatever. And they're still uh, like right in the middle of that deep pain. That doesn't have to happen. And so um, you can go to Facebook Live. We'll be on at 5 o'clock Eastern time talking about the ninth step and how that relates to uh, grief. Let's go to uh, Sally from Sunnyville, Texas, KWRD. Hi there. How are you? I'm, I'm fine. Um, thank you so much for taking my call. Um, sure. I called a while back about relationship issues. Um, with the, I'm older, um, and it's kind of a long distance. Um, and you sent me the, um, is this the one? And I read it, and it was wonderful. But my question is, um, how do I know? I didn't grow up with brothers. So how do you know how guys are wired, how they think? Um, I've been <laughs> doing research online, but I'm getting a lot of secular um, advice, you know, to lean back and to, you know, don't give so much. Um, and apparently I've dated wrong my whole life. Um, I mean, I have some sexual abuse issues um, back in my past, so I know I have some mm -hmm. trust. So I'm trying to 
get past that. Um, but I don't know where guys are coming from. I don't, I mean, have you written something that is, you know, you know tells women, you know, how guys are wired, what they're thinking? I mean, you know, I'm researching that they need, they want to be the hero and they want to pursue you. And, and how does a woman navigate that in the Christian realm? Yeah, okay. Give you some help with that right after this. Really glad you asked, you know. Here's the worst thing in the world for you is a guy wants to be a hero and he's looking for some desperate person that needs to be rescued and he picks you because you look like a desperate person to be rescued. That would be horrible. And uh, so I want to talk to you about that uh, right after this. You're listening to New Life Live. Heroes don't always have to go find somebody that's desperate to rescue. For most of my life, I've been dealing with an opiate addiction. Why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers? Maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial. We did what I see so many parents do, is it can't be an addiction. There's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against. And families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. I'm an addict, and I'm trying to get God in my life again. You seem to be able to get to the crux of a problem quickly. Our Christ-centered treatment programs can help you break free to embrace all that God has for you and your family. I just want to thank you guys for bringing me to a relationship with Jesus. There really is help for marital problems, depression, addictions, panic attacks, and feelings of hopelessness. I came back with so many tools to help me prepare myself to fight this struggle and this battle that I have every day. You can start living again today. Living the life God intended for you. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. They did care and they did follow up very lovingly and it made all the difference in my life. Call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Someone who cares is waiting at the other end of the phone. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Just call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. 1-800-639-5433. We'd love to hear from you. If you have a question or a comment, call toll-free 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. We are back. Steve Arterburn here. And um, so one of the things that could help you know how uh, a lot of women have done this, men think, is to read every man's battle. And so I'm going to send that to you. There's a lot of insight there uh, in that book. Uh, the other thing is, if I could find a copy, it's a, you might be able to order it online. Finding Mr. Right is a book that I wrote with Meg Rink, and it's all about the good stuff. Uh, there's a, there's a, a book, Avoiding Mr. Wrong, Avoiding the Bad Stuff. Um, but when you mentioned hero, the men want to be a hero. Dave Stoop and I um, just finished a book, it'll be out in about six months, on men and heroism. And the the soul of a hero and as we were writing this and we were talking to some women it was amazing how biased people are toward a man wanting to rescue versus be a hero alongside a strong heroine and and go out mm -hmm. and conquer the world together be partners together it's really interesting so you yes we we want to be a hero but we don't want to be uh, married to a zero just to be a hero it's kind of the motto there. well and if you uh, want Jill to be married to a zero there's something wrong with that yeah, heroism exactly right? it's not yeah, quite right. the most authentic thing um yeah. sally i i think this is the age-old question right and you know 
Yeah, it helps if you grow up with brothers. Um, I'm wondering if you have any guy friends or if you have any friends whose husbands you know. Um, I think it's helpful to actually talk to men and ask them questions and be able to interact with them. You know, even men that are like brothers to you can tell you how guys think and how they see the world differently than women do. And, you know, we women, we are always, we are just like detectives, right? We are always digging and trying to figure out and what did he mean? And did he think this? And we could mm -hmm. go on for hours and hours and hours. And men usually are, no, I just meant that. Like, it, 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 there's no yeah. hidden meaning, really. It's just that. It's like, no, that's just too simple. You can't be that, right? But, and it's not that they don't think deep thoughts, but they are much more, you know, take me at face value. And so, um, you know, that's where to balance out some of that inquiry. I mean, going around and around with your women friends is great, but to have some guy friends that you can just bounce some things off of, I think helps to give you a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like maybe you need to take your research in that direction a little bit. Yeah. Alice, a thought here? Well, Sally, I'd have you look at your connection style and the connection style of most of the men that you date and, and to look there for the mistakes that you're talking about making this pattern that you have over and over. Mm -hmm. Because we usually develop that style of attachment with our family of origin. So I, I'm a recovering avoider and pleaser. It's hard for me to ask tough questions. What did you mean by that? What do you want? What are you asking for? It's hard for me to pursue difficult conversations. Maybe that's true for you too. In my pleaser side, it's hard for me to express my needs and ask for them to be met. So I get missed in relationships if I'm not growing out of my unhealthy attachment style. I think that kind of information would be helpful mm -hmm. to you. And then also looking at the men that you date, are they avoiders? Are they controllers? Are they victims? Because each of these attachment styles thinks and acts differently, but we're all called to grow into secure attachment where we can be genuine, we express our thoughts, without all that hidden meaning or passive aggressive things that we we can we can do and then we ask for our needs and get them met openly honestly that'll be helpful for yeah. you mm -hmm. there's very, also very if I could good. mention another book um, that you would have to find yourself Sally it's by um, it's called for women only it's by Shanti Feldhan and it's a good little book on um, kind of describing just that what do men think yeah she's a very popular author um, great, great book there. Mm -hmm. Now, um, what could I send you? Let me send you a unique book. I'll send you this uh, Understanding and Loving a Person with Narcissistic Personality Disorder <laughs> because I think that's kind of the really? <laughs> other epidemic that we're seeing out there that yeah. you'd really want to steer clear of, and I'll send that to you. And, you know, we have eight of those books, Understanding and Loving a per Narcissistic Personality Disorder, a borderline personality disorder, there's a good one, uh, bipolar, um, alcohol, drug, di sexual addiction, all, it's all there. And uh, you can look at that at newlife.com, but I'll send you the one on narcissism. I hope Sally because... likes to read because I think this call, we've recommended more books <laughs> yeah, than any right. other call in history. <laughs> well, by the time you finish, this, finish the books, you won't have much time for dating and yeah. that'll keep you safer. <laughs> But really, I'm really glad you're doing some research because it is uh, something a lot of people. Yeah, don't some people do. don't do enough. No, right? they just get taken um, away with their feelings. That is true. One eight hundred two two nine three thousand. I think Larry's still in the studio. Is Larry still yes, there? I'm here. Could hear the laugh. Larry, talk to us about our matching fund. We want to. We need uh, help. We need to get this money released so we can use it to help other people we do and um, how it works is uh, we had a group of folks who decided to pull their funds and put it out as a match to our audience so we said they gave 374,000 we've set that money aside in a fund in a an account mm -hmm. and when somebody gives what if you give $25 we're gonna take $25 out of that pooled money so we'll have $50 to spend and so we need your help we, we need to release the rest of that money. So if you could make a gift, that would be helpful. It will help us stay and get on top of our finances and where we want to be forever. And I uh, want to thank the Club New Life people who have carried mm -hmm. us through up to this point through this COVID time. But uh, you can help us if you can't join Club New Life or even if you can and are. 
please make a gift towards this matching fund. Hmm. Please do. I was skeptical going into it. Temptation is up, isolation is up. It's the very things that feed addiction. Every day, thousands of women discover their husband is struggling with sexual integrity. And since shelter-in-place orders have gone into effect, traffic to porn sites has skyrocketed. New Life's Every Man's Battle Workshop can help. As they advertise, it really mm -hmm. was a no-shame zone. I've now yeah. got a, a herd of men in my corner. That support system is, is huge. During this time of social distancing, the Every Man's Battle Workshop will be held online Saturday, May 30th. Find sexual integrity, accountability, and connection. Register now to reserve a place at the Every Man's Battle Online Workshop. She saw the immediate change. By the end of the day yesterday, her and I had conversations, calm, respectful conversations. We've never mm -hmm. been there. Call 1-800-NEW-LIFE, 1-800-N-E-W-L-I-F-E. Hi, this is Steve Arterburn, and for 30 years, New Life has been the most trusted name in Christian counseling. Your ministry has saved my life. If you struggle with emotional hurt, family or marriage problems, the pit of depression, or the pain of addictions, we can help. I'm down 100 pounds now from what I was. You guys are awesome. You are a blessing to America. <laughs> Our treatment programs provide clinically appropriate solutions from licensed professionals all in a biblical framework. I have had problems with alcohol. I think God has ordained this place to be His. You don't have to be a prisoner of your pain. Help is available at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. She tells me that I'm a new man and I feel like a new man. It worked for me and it can work for them too. This time it is different. If you're ready to take the first step toward genuine spiritual and emotional healing, please call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God can open the door to a better tomorrow right now. Call one 800 New Life. That's 1-800-639-5433. We're glad you joined us for New Life Live. To be a part of the program, call 1-800-229-3000. Now back to New Life Live. Hey, we're back. Before we go to another call, 1-800-229-3000. Um, I think I mentioned this, but Kirby is wearing a brand new big old gold medal because, thanks to the co-author Marcus Brotherton, that was Kirby, McCook, <laughs> Kirby McCook and the Jesus Chronicles um, won Gold Medallion Award, hey. Book oh, of the Year hey. for Young People Literature. And uh, that's pretty that's tough competition. Awesome. We're, we're thrilled. And uh, so I'll, I'll just offer this to you. Um, $20, you call us, and I'll sign it to a child, grandchild, niece, nephew. We'll send it off to them and tell them that you sent it. But it's a great Bible story book, and it won the, the book of the year. They only, you know, they give one to kids, and they give it young literature, and here's this one. So, oh my goodness, really excited about that. But it is a great way to communicate truth, and it's Bible teaching from the voice of a 12-year-old kid and it's uh, pretty funny and pretty profound you could see all of the stories i read them online i'll, I, I'll record a couple today but they're on youtube uh, and i think i'm now in chapter 46 but you can start at the beginning really excited about that but if you want to copy the book for somebody you love child grandchild 1-800 new life is the number and it's such a thrill to get to do a book and then to have it win an award pretty exciting I want to mention one other thing, and then we'll go to the calls, and the number is 1-800-229-3000. But today, uh, we are welcoming some new Louisville listeners tuning in on Pure Radio, 92.3 FM. And, uh, you know, it's Pure Radio, so we're going to have to clean up our act because we're, <laughs> you know, we, we just kind of do the best we can. But they're pure. So, anyway, really thrilled about that change there in louisville and uh hope and pray if you have any friends there you'll tell them uh where we are and how they could tune in well i've got martha here i don't know if i can go to martha if she's free to talk to me but martha is from jacksonville uh, mississippi and uh i was just thinking we could take her there she comes hi martha how are you today hi i'm doing fine how are you excellent what's going on in your life I have a very difficult 
basically non-existent at this moment relationship with my mother. She, mm-hmm. I finally, after probably a good 10 to 12 years of really difficult relationship with her, convinced her to go to therapy with me. And it was terrible. She, she was so mean in that session and just said so many hurtful things. And my therapist, visit from me to this therapist so she didn't know either one of us so it was a totally objective session and afterwards after the session was over she told me that she's almost positive my mother has borderline personality disorder that she okay. has been jealous okay. of me her whole life she's competed with me her whole life she's it's just a very difficult situation, and I don't know how to get past it. So I talked to her. I called her about two or three times since this COVID thing happened and just asked if they needed needed anything, any money, any food, anything like that. And she basically bites my head off every time I call, and she even she, she makes up lies. That's, that's the biggest problem is she okay. makes up lies and all right, so we didn't happen. Mm-hmm. All right, we we know just like you do what uh, it's like to continue to be in a relationship with someone who's borderline personality disorder. The jealousy, the you know, mm-hmm. someone either you're married to or uh, they're your mom or dad, and and they're jealous uh, versus proud or happy. Jill, why don't you get us started? Uh, okay, so she knows this uh, every time she she says every time mm-hmm. I call this happen so what what's the best advice here if every time you call well this kind of I, thing you know martha i mean this is so difficult to grow up with somebody like this and you know i i don't know if you've seen kind of the swings in her personality where sometimes she might be actually really delightful and then you get hopeful um yeah. And, and then yeah. only to have that be crashed down. And so I think, you know, it, it's helpful to have an outsider tell you this. Um, and I hope that you, you know, are really seeing that through some objective eyes. And, and maybe at this point in life, you, you are there. Because it's really important that we get to a place where we learn what we can count on and what we can't count on. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're a child, we do everything we can to keep our parents good to the point of making ourselves bad. Because it's easier for us to be bad than to have a bad parent. Because then what happens to us in that, right? So to be able to work on shifting that for yourself and to see that your mom has some great limitations and there is no way you are going to be able to get it right or meet all of her needs. And is that, have you come to that place? I have, but my problem is the last time I talked to her was about a month ago and she told me that she didn't want me to ever call her again. And then she texts me like three minutes later inviting me on a camping trip and it's like just this craziness okay. of she you know just, let, it's, let me it's let me crazy. tell you what go ahead, go ahead steve you're you're gonna have to do this martha you're gonna have to do this and i'm gonna send you the workbook to help you but here's here's what you have to do you have to get to the place of acceptance that this is who she is and she isn't going to change and that your expectation should always be that this is who she is. So so we have to grieve the loss of the mother you could have had, the mother that would have been great for you, the mother that you still would like to show up one day but most likely never will, right? The mother that's reasonable, semi-reasonable, yeah. right? And so, so unlike other folks, uh, who have to make an adjustment or two to accommodate some, you know, quirky things. You have to grieve the loss of a normal mom. But and here- once you grieve that, then you can accept who she is with no expectation of her ever being different. And that frees you to not go crazy over somebody that is struggling like she is. And I'll send you the understanding and loving a person 
with borderline personality disorder. Alice, you have a thought here. Well, you may need to set up protective measures mm -hmm. around yourself as well. Something along the lines of, Mom, when you make an extreme statement, like don't ever call me again, or you say hurtful things to me, I probably have to take a step back for a little bit. I might even need yeah. a couple days break, and then I'll be able to re-engage with you. But mm -hmm. I can't go back and forth like this. I, I need to protect my heart a bit more, Mom. I also, in we're times right that are... Now, we're having... mm -hmm. Go, go ahead. ahead. I'm sorry, right now we're having no contact because she's on a smear campaign and she told me herself that all of her friends think I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. She's made up lies saying, like when I called her genuinely out of concern to see if they needed anything, the next time I talked to her, she said, well, you called me and said if I'm ever in dire need to call you. Well, I never said that. But she's telling okay, so there are a lot of things that you could tell us. There are a lot of things you yeah. could tell us that would further show us she's borderline personality disorder. But that's not going to help you. Yeah, so and it's not going to help you to go over those things over and over again. You'll have to one, move on. One yeah. of the things actually they found with people that are borderline, they really do feel things more intensely. Their brain activity is more intense than the ab than the non-borderline person and so she goes to those extremes and they have an inability to kind of see things in context everything they're feeling right in the, that moment it's like um it, it's like a frozen picture versus life being more of a movie right a, a motion picture where it flows and there's context they see things in a very fixed state and so you're getting these all or nothing statements so you have to kind of rework how you measure things it's it's um when you get caught up in trying to figure out and put them into a reasonable frame that you deal with other people on it just doesn't work so when your mom goes from zero to a hundred you have to go okay so for on a normal scale that would look like this but for her it feels like this and you don't take it as seriously as she's saying it. However, Alice, I think what you are saying is vital, that you have to set boundaries, and you can do that in a loving way, but you have to be firm about it, and you yeah. have to give her some reality on how her behavior impacts you. And, and sidestep well, the argument. Don't get pulled yeah. into it. You might have to give a lot of, I got to agree to disagree about that, Mom. And I'm not, I'm not yeah. able to talk about it anymore. Well, here's the thing. I mean, what Jill said about this everything is in the moment versus a movie going on it, it's such a great picture because here's what the borderline personality disorder want your mom here's what your mom wants from you everything you have mm -hmm. everything yeah be at her beck and call let her abuse you and get over it quickly focus on every word she has to say at every moment that's what she wants and guess what if you could do it it wouldn't be it wouldn't be enough because yeah. her soul is really damaged probably from her own parents for most of my life i've been dealing with an opiate addiction why is opioid addiction quickly becoming one of our nation's biggest killers maybe it's because it isn't only those who are addicted who are in denial we did what i see so many parents do is it can't be an addiction there's something medically wrong. It's impossible to solve a problem when you don't know what you're up against, and families will try to find any explanation except the one that will put them on the right path. Alcoholism and drug addiction is a family disease. It doesn't affect just the individual. If someone you love is abusing painkillers, know what you're up against. It's time to admit it's addiction and seek treatment. Call us today at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have Christ-centered partner treatment centers around the country. Call 1-800-639-5433 or visit us online at newlife.com. We just made a decision. We will do whatever it takes. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. I was really living a very anxiety-filled life. I turned on New Life, and the topic that day was about anxiety. And just by listening 
I got relief. You can help New Life Live stay on the air by joining Club New Life today. When you sign up to support us monthly through Club New Life, we'll send you the Transformation Welcome Gift, which includes a personal size life recovery Bible, a life recovery journal, and five life recovery workbooks. Plus, there are ongoing benefits like access to the Club New Life video library, the monthly Club New Life CD or download, quarterly resources, free shipping on purchased resources, and discounts on workshops. I did go to Take Your Life Back. That's been immensely helpful to me. That's why I continue to support the ministry with the hope that it not only am I helping my own situation, that I'm helping others as well. Support Club New Life, and together we can help hurting people find help and hope in life's hardest places. Call 1-800-639-5433 to join Club New Life today. To find out more information about New Life or to order any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. Now back to New Life Live. We're back. Steve Arterburn here. Really glad you're with us today <clears throat> and hope you had a great Mother's Day. Uh, celebrated with my mom and uh, with uh, our mom, Misty, but my mom was in quarantine in the assisted living place. And uh, not only was it that, but now this week she has her birthday, 93 years old she's going to be. Uh, and uh, so you uh, say a prayer for mom and she's healthy, happy. I've never seen anybody with so many friends and so much laughter. Oh my gosh, your she mom is the is best. She's so funny. An honor. Uh, it's an honor to be her son. Let's go and have, uh, and by the way, we're going to do another program after this. You could watch it on Facebook Live if you'd like to. Uh, but how about we go talk to Sheila, Waco, Texas, KBBW uh, is the station. Hi there, Sheila. How are you? Hi. Thank you all for Hi. taking my call. Sure. This is my issue. I'm dealing with racial thoughts, and they're evil thoughts, something that I wouldn't dare act on. But my feelings are with all these people, white people, getting away with this killing of black people, my thoughts that are so ugly are like in that movie, A Time to Kill. You know, mm -hmm. you kill somebody in my family, hey, we need to go to their family and maybe it'll stop if people go to killing white people's family members to see, to show them you yeah. got to stop it. Yeah. You know, and I so, hate that I feel that way, but that's the way I feel. Maybe it'll stop. Well, it's and I know no. that's not godly. Yeah. Well, the the other thing that I would hope you could do first before you would do a racial thing, a racist thing, and lump all the white people in together, is let's. Well, I know let's, I don't. I know I. But don't let's feel, segment okay. out. I know everybody is not let, racist. Let's let's segment out how stupid white people are that are racist. How how sad it is that somebody needs to look or feel smarter or brighter or better than someone else. And the only thing that they can use is skin color. Now, that just shows you how ignorant a person is. If all I've got to feel better or superior over somebody is the color of my skin and I don't see the real person underneath the skin color that's really sad and so i have pity I as well as sad. disgust that's why I'm feeling bad yeah. That I think mm -hmm. that. yeah so just when when you rather than say i feel bad about white people that kill you try to segment out the stupid white people <laughs> because or stupid people we're, in general yeah just stupid people right that, well, yeah, right yeah. Who, who take stupid you know people. take um their thoughts and their feelings to such an extreme that yeah. they don't get help for their issues and that they act out against another human being. It's the opposite of suicide, right? Homicide. It's acting out their anger uh -huh. and rage on society and on someone who's innocent, completely innocent and, and, and vulnerable. And, you know, it really is, although we see, you know, certain cases um, highlighted it's really there are cases across the board that are tragic regardless of skin color oh that's so true you know there yeah. are so and if you look actually at the stats it's kind of staggering in terms of 
the you know if you're just looking at racial profiling you know the the numbers and and how they pan out but there are cases that highlight the hurts that people have felt in general and those mm -hmm. are the ones that i think you know run really deep you know this is just yeah. the tip of the iceberg of so many hurts that groups of people have felt well you know we mentioned uh, watching the sound of music on mother's day and here's this wonderful musical, but what's mm -hmm. the foundation of that musical? Yeah. It's Nazism, and, yeah. and they take over Austria. And what is that all about? It, it's it's true. about one person and then a whole group of people wanting uh, to wipe out an, an entire race of people. It is so tragic. Horrific. And and many times the people that are racist have been trained that way mm -hmm. by their parents and uh, so we need to be the transitional generation and look at any racism that we have. And, you know, you might think, well, you know, uh, I can't change. This is the way I am. Um, I was uh, doing a little devotional this morning, and I was uh, reading about all of the plagues that came on Pharaoh. And Pharaoh was literally the most stubbornly resistant person you could ever imagine to all that he went through before he let the people of Israel go. But there was a little passage I've never seen before or focused on, but you know, all these magicians were around Pharaoh and every time Moses would do a miracle, they try to fake it, you know, and then these gnats came. <laughs> they, they, they couldn't fake that. And here's what these people, their kind of their lives depended on being able to do magic in front of Pharaoh. And they said, when, when the plague came, this final plague, or before they changed their minds, they said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. Now, isn't that something? Mm -hmm. These guys that have been trying to prove to Pharaoh it wasn't God, absolutely transformed their whole thinking to say to Pharaoh, uh, this probably could cost us our lives and our job, but what just happened here, that was God. Now go to the New Testament and think about these Roman soldiers that escorted Jesus up the hill of Golgotha with a cross, pretty committed to the military and to Rome. And Jesus dies on the cross and they look around and say, surely this is the son of God. That's transformation. And you could be the most racist human being ever. And if you would just open a door to truth and the Holy Spirit, if you'd ask God to show you, you could change. You could transform. If the magicians of Pharaoh could see the finger of God, if Roman soldiers could see the Son of God, you could see the truth about your life. And you know what? A lot of us have a lot more things going for us than others, and we've got a lot of things not going for us in relation to other people. That's why comparison we always lose. It either causes arrogance or inferiority. And that's why we want to accept ourselves, accept others. And the key to that is accepting God's love into a heart that's been transformed by his truth. Now, if you need some help with resistance, you call us and we wanna help you. 1-800-NEW-LIFE. We have so many great things going this is, um, I, mean, I don't think we've ever been busier, harder working, uh, trying to create new ways to reach and help people. And, and if you need some help, just call us and see what we've got. A whole video library is open to you, and there's, there's got to be something there that you would like. You can sign up on a, uh, an email. We'll send you a video every day just to try to help you through this time. And it is so uncertain, this future of ours that we can get so bogged down in worry and anxiety, but every day we've got to wake up and say, Lord, I'm going to, I'm going to trust you today, just like I trusted you yesterday. That's what we want to do, but we'll help you. We'll find a counselor for you. We've got books, Bibles, so many things that can help you, but you'll have to call us. Now, if you can help us, it's the same number, 1-800-NEW-LIFE. And we'll just, We'll just help you any way we can. And it might be some of the tip sheets, how to get through stuff. I don't know what it is, but we'll find something that can help you.
Now today, uh, 5 o'clock Eastern Time, I'll be on Facebook Live. We're going to do another program right now on Facebook Live. You could watch it. And you could call in and get some help at 1-800-3000. If you're able to support us, we have a matching gift. Every dollar will be matched, and we can't really access it until you do. And that's at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. God bless you. Thank you. Jill and I'll see you all listening. next time. We hope this program has helped you by giving you insights for handling the challenges you face in your life. We want you to know that we're here for you, but you also need to know that New Life Live is a listener-supported ministry. To make your donation or to get any of the resources mentioned on today's program, call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. That's 1-800-639-5433 or write to us at New Life Ministries, P.O. Box 1029, Lake Forest, California, 92609. Please join us again tomorrow for New Life Live. Hi, Steve Arterman here. Thanks for watching New Life Live on our New Life YouTube channel. You know, you can see it anytime. Hope you'll subscribe. And when you do, hope you'll turn that little button thing on the bell so that whenever we post a new video, it'll ring right through. Now, if you go to newlife.com, you'll see the schedule of when we're in the studio, which is helpful to know if you have a question for the program. Or you could go to newlife.com or call us at 1-800-NEW-LIFE. You could do this on the app. I mean, there's so many ways that you can stay in touch with us and know when we're there because we want to answer your questions. So thanks for watching right here on the New Life YouTube channel, and we'll see you next time. Click here to subscribe.